Okay, uh, good evening everyone and welcome to the Historic District Commission meeting. It is Tuesday, April 20th and it is 7.12 p.m. Pursuant to the open meeting law, any person may make an audio or video recording of this public meeting or may transmit the meeting through any medium. Attendees are therefore advised that such recordings or transmissions are being made, whether perceived or unperceived, by those present and are deemed acknowledged and permissible. Can I get a roll call, please? Uh, Connie Soule? Here. Richard Mancini? Yes. Jason Bouchard-Naraki? Yes. Okay, and I am Kristen Cantara Oliveira. And we do have three open seats currently on this commission. Uh, all, just so the public is aware, all of our uh, attendees are attending by Zoom virtually this evening. So first up on our agenda are the minutes. I'm gonna to ask to delay approval of those minutes until our next meeting. Okay, is that for all three? All three, yes. Okay, so I have a request to uh, move the minutes to our next meeting. I'll second. Okay, I have a motion and a second. Roll call, Connie Soule? Yes. Richard Mancini? Yes. Uh, Jason Bouchard Naraki? Yes. And Kristen Cantara Oliveira say yes. Okay, so those will be moved. Okay, so we will do that in May. Uh, general correspondence, we had no general, uh, general business correspondence, we had no correspondence. Um, do we, um, Carrie, did we have any citizen input? No, oh, ma'am. Okay. So moving on, uh, first order of business is we had a request to build a shed at 570 Rock Street. And we do, I, I'm sorry, 577 Rock Street. And we have uh, the homeowners with us. So Mr. Jim Sewell and Mrs. Connie Sewell, if you would like to, um, I, I mean, I sent everything. Um, so we, we do know what it is that you're requesting. Um, does anybody have any, any questions for them? Would you, would you guys like to speak first? Just give us a little. Yeah, my name is Jim Soul. I'm the homeowner at 537 Rock Street. And uh, so uh, being in the local historic district, uh, new construction can be um, a difficult area to deal with. Uh, in this case, it's a shed, uh, which could be considered a temporary structure. Uh, we met the uh, basic building um, code guidelines or under 200 square feet and off, you know, four feet off the uh, uh, property line. It was not within 20 feet of uh, permanent structures. Uh, the shed is gonna be behind our uh, property line from where it is the situation to the street. And uh, we are going to build it. Uh, it won't, it's not, in the exact, not in the same style as our house, but it will be built in a classic style with classic materials. So it will have a nine uh, pitch roof. Uh, it'll have overhangs. It'll have uh, architectural slate shingle roof, and it will be red cedar shingles. So there won't be any siding on it. Um, I think the windows are vinyl, but they'll be paintable. And um, so I, I'm hoping that that's acceptable. Okay, Richard, um, anything? No, I, I saw the cut on the building. Uh, actually, can I rent that apartment up on the second floor uh, of, of that building? <laughs> uh, but no, pardon? <laughs> No plumbing. <laughs> no plumbing. Shucks. <laughs> well, I've already okay. asked to rent the shed, so. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I have uh, no problems with that at all. It's, it's following all the codes, all the guidelines. Uh, it's uh, fine. I, I see no, no, no problems. Okay. 
Um, Jason? Um, to echo what um, Rick said, I, I have no issues. I mean, it's, you know, everything is in line with, um, with the, the district and um, <clears throat> just driving by it, like, I don't even think you could even see where the location is, where it's between yeah, vegetation you, and it's in, in the hill and you can't really see it. So, <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, same for me. I, um, I have no issue with it at all. I think it, it, it conforms to the district guidelines and you, you can't see it from the street anyway. Um, it's actually really nice. Like I said, I <laughs> wanted to rent it out. It looks really nice. Um, so yeah, I, I have no issue with that. We're hoping that we, that it meets with satisfaction. Like I said, we're sensitive about uh, setting precedent for the rest of the district. So you did have any concerns, I'd, I'd hope you did tell us. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no. Thank you. So would someone like to make a motion? I'll make a motion that we uh, accept this. Uh, building. Okay, so I have a motion. A second. second. Okay, motion and a second. Um, I'll do a roll call. Uh, Connie? I'll abstain. Okay, Richard? Yes. Jason? Yes. And Kristen Cantara Oliveira, which is me, I vote yes as well. So um, I'll get a letter to the building department for uh, to approve the shed. Thank you so much. Sure. <clears throat> okay. Um, hang on one minute. I just got to. I don't have my agenda in front of me because I didn't print it out. So I need to. I need to get it here in front of me. You need to stop. Okay. Here we go. <clears throat> so next on our agenda, we have five, uh, 710 Rock Street, which is a porch. Do we Hi. Are you here for that? Yeah, I, I'm here. We just got off a plane from, <laughs> uh, we're in Florida. Oh, okay. And okay. My teenager is harassing me. So ah. I'm sorry. <laughs> I told her to be okay. quiet. Okay. Sorry, guys. That's okay. Can you just um, state your name and address for the record? Yep. Um, hi, it's <laughs> nice to see you all. Um, my name is Sandra Melanson, and I um, live at 710 Rock Street. I bought 710 Rock in uh, October of 2019. Okay. Well, welcome. Thank you. <clears throat> okay. Glad so, you landed safely. What's that? I said, I'm glad you landed and arrived oh, safely. Oh, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> It was just a real last minute thing, so. Um, so we did receive uh, your request and mm -hmm. you're requesting to rebuild a porch. Yeah. That was demolished. So if you want to just give us a little bit of um, background and then we'll. we'll um, oh, sure. So on December 1st <clears throat> of uh, uh, 20, I guess it must be 2020, the, a drunk driver came by and just demolished the porch in four of our cars out front. Mm -hmm. And so um, the, I think I need to apologize because I didn't know everything I needed to do. The guy, the contractor is just building it in the same footprint. So I didn't know I was breaking any rules. And um, anyway, first of all, I'm sorry for all that chaos, but um, so he, yeah, he started to build it just exactly the way it was built. You know, the, the, the outline was sort of still there in all the debris. So he's building it in the same, I guess, footprint as, um, as it was before. And okay. I think I wrote, he told me what to write down a list of the, um, so anyway, it's already halfway done. He just needs to add the railings when, when us, we found out that, you know, why I needed approval, I had no idea. Again, I apologize, I should have known, but um, so I don't know what else to say unless you have any questions. Um, no, so how long have you owned the house? Just um, since, uh, well, since, oh God, 
since October of 2019, but I didn't move in until a year later. I didn't move in until a long time later, just cause I was, I had to stay in Boston cause my mother got sick. So I was in Boston taking care of her until she passed away. And then I was only in Fall River for four months when that um, happened. Okay. So when you bought the property, were you told that it was in a historic district? Yeah. Okay. Most definitely. Yeah. So I, I mean, I should have known and I'm, you know, uh, I definitely should. I, I knew it was in a historic society, but I guess I didn't know what all that entailed. Okay. But I, well, I just, I just wasn't sure if, if you had been told when. Okay. Yeah, most definitely. Uh, but I know what it entails now. Okay. So. Okay. So um, I don't know. Um, I, Whoever would like to start. Well, I can start. Okay. Home, it's a beautiful mm -hmm. home. It, it's Victorian beautiful. Italianate. Um, and it's the cornerstone of the 40C district. Like it yeah. literally starts our district. And mm -hmm. your side porch, even though it's a small side porch, um, is really um, visual to um, anyone that drives by or walks by. And it's a mm -hmm. really important part of the home, even though it's not the front porch um, yeah. and so the materials the description that you sent us the materials vinyl is not um, really an acceptable um, material for the interior uh, secretary of interior standards um, and there isn't details about the porch rails, um, I saw your drawing, but there isn't details about height, uh, how it's coming off the house, like if it has like a gooseneck uh, drop, which would complement the style of your home. Um, and that, I'm sorry, you rails. skipped out a little bit. Oh, I'm you skipped sorry. Out a little bit. It said, the last thing I heard was gooseneck. Yeah, so a gooseneck style rail that comes off the home adds a classic look. Also the height of uh, the porch rails shouldn't be any higher than the other existing, the, the original on the front. Um, but like, how would I know what the original was when it was like completely demolished and I have no, I'm sorry. Should I let you, I'm sorry, should I let you talk? I don't want to interrupt you. No, I understand that you have questions and hopefully we can try to answer some of them and anybody else can interject as well. But um, the style of the porch, even though you don't know what was there originally, you can um, buy other homes of the same architectural style. Uh, you can mimic what would have been there or what you know could have been there. And previous to what is currently there now that your new builder was building, um, yeah. it was a wooden structure. It wasn't the vinyl um, uh, materials that you are, or that your contractors recommended, including the, the treads, the stair treads. And I mean, that's me talking. We have other people here. I know, um, others may want to contribute and we're here to help you okay the look that you want to maintain the beauty of your home um so so don't else? isn't there somewhere where um there are some historic photos of the home that actually show what the side porch did look like i so have a, a picture that when we did the form B's for the 40C district. Yep. Um, and that picture has a different um, skirt to the, um, you know, to the porch itself. Right. Uh, which looked really classic. Um, I have that. Um, yeah, see, that would be helpful because that would be, I, but the what rails need to be like historically appropriate, the height, not code heights, not today's heights, because then it changes the look of the home. So if you go by your front porch and you use that as a guide, that kind of helps. And usually the gooseneck, the drop gooseneck, um, 
adds that style to it. And then the, the spindles, um, the appropriate spindles, uh, focused on a Victorian Italian age. And Jason might be able to contribute more than I can. Uh, okay. Um, regarding um, the the detail to the porch, um, and uh, Connie, the photo that you that you found, um, you said that was from when the forty C district was. Enacted, Correct. nothing. It's earlier. not necessarily what was. That's not what was there originally. Right. right. And so once the forty C was put in place, that's when now you need to meet um, the Secretary of Interior standards mm -hmm. when you're even for reconstruction of um, you know a porch, any of the porches. Um, there are. And I can't think of any off the top of my head, but there are Italianates uh, within within the district. Um, I one of my go tos um, is a uh, uh, field guide to American architecture, or I think it's field guide to American houses by Virginia McAllister. Um, basically, it's just the I my opinion. I call it the Bible of um, historic houses, and there's usually um, a very good overview of the type of detail that is incorporated in all the different styles, whether it's Greek Revival, Italianate, <clears throat> Queen Anne. Um, and that book is, um, it's still readily available. Um, <clears throat> and using that along with the Secretary to the Interior, Interior Standards um, will result in something that will be um, historically appropriate. Um, as Connie mentioned, the, uh, the PVC um, is not, um, is not appropriate within the district. Um, and um, so that's... Can I say something? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. The guy like directly across from me, mm -hmm. I think the guy who owns it's name is Manny. Uh, anyway, he owns the other house on the corner and his whole porch is PVC. Do you know what house I'm talking about? Right across from mine on rock. Um, Furtado, that's his name, Manny Furtado. Okay. I'm not sure which house you're referring to. Uh, on what side on Rock? Like it's directly across from mine. I, their address is on French, They're but they have a side. What color is the house, blue? Yeah, it's blue. So when the 40 seat district was put in place, any home the way it was mm -hmm. stays as is. Okay. However, any new construction or okay. any new work has to meet the interior, uh, the Secretary of Interior Standards. Yeah, so, because he was like, oh, well, that guy has it, so it's good enough for you, no, sort of thing. Okay, yeah, so I understand. Obviously, he obviously isn't educated in um, mm -hmm. the 40C district. Okay. And so just because a neighbor has it, Okay. Means that it probably happened prior mm -hmm. uh, to it becoming a 40C district. Okay. The beauty of a 40C district, it protects you, it protects your home so mm -hmm. that your neighbor doesn't get to do some crazy uh, construction that devalues yours. And that's no, what I understand. To prevent here. So no, yeah. anything going forward, any construction, whether it's your friend, your neighbor across the street, or uh -huh. any of the homes in the 40 C have yeah. to meet the same criteria. Okay. I live in the 40 C and I mm -hmm. have to meet the same criteria. That's no, I totally understand. Yeah. Yeah. I mean I the yeah, the neighborhood's beautiful. I don't want to do anything to detract from that. So well, we appreciate that for sure. Yeah. So if you want to try to design it, um, you know, um, it, it does need, it needs to come back to us with a new design using okay. appropriate materials and stuff. And you're thinking I can get a, like a thing from the Virginia McAllister book? Well, I'm just using that as uh, honestly an example, but going by what's already pre-existing in the neighborhood, um, I mean, you can, 
um, uh, and I'm really just drawing a blank other of other houses to kind of go by, but um, because there's there are Italianates, there's a lot. Uh, it's a mix. Um, Italianate is um, it, it falls within the Victorian uh, general theme or style. Um, so it's not like a Queen Anne Victorian where those are going to be a little bit more heavily robust and detailed, but it's not, um, uh, it's a little earlier than that. Um, so for example, like going up, uh, Rock Street, mm -hmm. um, uh, let's see over near, um, uh, like in, in the neighborhood where, uh, Connie, like, uh, your, your, your house, those are mostly all Queen Anne's, but, um, I believe. So, I mean, it, well, the one across from me, it's the tan one that it's a diocese, I believe it is, mm -hmm. house on the corner. Uh, they've done what? some great porch work. If you look at, um, there are several homes actually that have done some pretty incredible porch work. But I think if you use any kind of classic look and class and, and uh, appropriate materials, you're going to end up with an amazing looking uh, porch. Mm -hmm. um, the gooseneck is something that's like, it just, it just looks uh, classic and gives you that immediate uh, style, I think. Um, and then your rails, the height is very important um, that you don't tr make it too high. Okay. Um, and also um, um, the style of the rails themselves. Okay. And you know, it's a small porch. So I think you can create a, a little masterpiece there without, you know, feeling overwhelmed. Yeah. Uh, at the time, I just needed to put something up mm -hmm. because it was completely like demolished. I was coming in through the basement. Yeah, no, I understand. Okay. So one of the things that we're actually in the process of doing, but it hasn't been done yet, is we are, um, we got funding from Community Preservation Committee to do a set of guidelines. It's preservation guidelines, and it's going to be, it'll uh, pertain especially to the district because it, it's um, Secretary of Interior Standards guidelines for historic properties. So homes in the district would be able to refer to this when they're doing any kind of reservation um, renovations on their properties. But unfortunately, because of COVID, it got pushed back, so they're not done yet. But one of the places that you can actually look is if you look in the um, the city of Newton, hmm. they okay. actually they yeah. actually have their preservation guidelines, and you can access that online. And they have great, great information in there. And it'll it'll give you some good ideas on what you can do as far as porches and Italian. It's, and, um, okay. it's a good resource to use in the meantime while we're still working on ours. Okay. That makes sense. Thank you for that help. Mm -hmm. So perhaps you can put something together and come back to us. Okay. All right. In yeah. Meantime, in the meantime... You know, enjoy your stay in Florida. And we Thank you. To hearing back from you. Okay, so uh, that's a lot to think about, and I will. Um, oh, I meant to ask a question. So, like, if if I need a letter from you guys for the insurance company, would someone be willing to? If I draft it, will someone be willing to sign it? If I need more money to to have all this stuff done. What kind of letter are you referring to? Well, just to say that, like, um, uh, there are certain parameters that the porch need to be built under, and you know, just that 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 there are certain parameters because it's a historical district. I mean, I think um, it's a city ordinance that your your home is actually in a forty C district. You know, okay, the company should know what that is and if they don't they really should be able to see what it is yeah they don't because nobody even told me so so yeah so i don't Kristen, have we ever done anything like this i don't recall well we've never gotten a request um yeah. 
because no one's, I mean, no one ever had anything demolished that was going to be fixed by insurance. Yeah. You well, know, the I thing don't, is, I don't is that... think it's an unreasonable hmm. thing. I mean, I mean, just to easily draft up a letter saying that this property sits in a, a 40C district and um, any renovations to the property need to be done according to Secretary of Interior standards. Um, okay. And that should give them an idea at least of, you know, what you're up against. So yeah, yeah. that's easy enough to do. Yeah. Okay. That sounds great. Yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah. I can All right. Well, thank you for, I mean, you know, maybe we don't need it now, but I'll ask the insurance guy. Yeah. If he, he if came you out do, and adjusted it. So the thing is, is that he came out Rick, and adjusted it. Rick, I know you have been working with her. Um, do you have any input? No, it, it, everything yourself and Jason and, and Kristen, you guys have said it all. <laughs> it's, uh, I, I agree. Uh, and uh, the, the structure should be more uh, uh, more construction with, with the wood product, you know, to, to, to blend. Um, but uh, I'm, I'm in total agreement. I'm also in agreement with getting a letter out. Uh, to, okay. to the insurance company. Um, you know, we do that for historic credits. Uh, okay. It's pretty much the same here. So. Well, I'll, I'll just ask, the, I'll, I'll ask the insurance guy if, if I need that. I mean, it's just like he already came out and did the claim and then already, you know, we already bought all the material. So, um, so I, it's going to be a, a just additional money. Mm-hmm. To get the correct material, so mm -hmm. anyway. and, it, and it and it would behoove the insurance underwriter to be mm -hmm. aware of of these rules and regulations. That's that's their job. And if yeah, I mean, I gave him the whole like when I bought the house, I gave him the whole like packet of the uh, mm -hmm. you know that thing the guy gives you when you buy a house the inspection, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and it had like all the parameters of like you know sure. the house. Yeah, but you know. Oh, in addition, Sandra, in addition to like, um, you know, your contract is saying, oh, the guy across the street has it, so you should be fine. He didn't mm -hmm. pay a permit for your porch. That's yeah. basic. Yeah. So I'd be concerned about that. He, you know, he went out and bought these materials and stuff. So I don't know how um, giving the insurance company is going to be considering this guy went out and yeah. just you know, picked up the materials that he wanted based on what the neighbor had. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, like, you know, I'm not from around here, so yeah. I just have to trust the people that are here. Like, if I was back in Boston, I'd have, you know, one of my older brother's friends do it, and he'd know exactly what he was doing. But like I said, I don't I don't know a soul here, yeah. so. You still have to put a, pull a permit, though, you know, so. Yeah. I, I mean, that pot, you know, he should have, that should yeah, have been. Yeah, I agree. That. Yeah. That. Anyway, I just like, you know, put, maybe put my trust in people that I shouldn't have. <laughs> so anyway, but all right, we'll get it all straightened out. I really appreciate your time. Thank and you. Your Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you for coming in. You know, any questions, feel free to reach out and, um, and you know. Yeah. And, and, you know, the, the rise and width of those threads and the risers uh, will will add a lot to that porch. Um, what is there now might be today's building standard, uh, not what that porch originally had. You know, because it, if you if you look at some of these pictures here of the demolition and you look at the uh, stair threads that are here, uh, they, they appear to be much wider than what you presently have. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's really not being constructed now to meet even the original standard or the original okay. porch. Uh, so so you, you, you might want might want to just check with a maybe a, I don't know, another contractor or someone that, that you know, has an idea of the, the mm -hmm. construction and types of construction that are necessary. Okay. That makes sense. Yeah, the not pulling a permit, a contractor not pulling a permit for me would be a giant red flag. Yeah. Like mm -hmm. I don't know that I would want that person working on my property if they're, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. I mean that right there is a is huge red flag. Mm -hmm. so. All right. Well, thank, thank you. you.
Yeah, let us know. I mean, if you want me to do the letter for the insurance. Oh, okay, just, I'll let you know. Let me know. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so All much. Right. Thank right. you so much. Enjoy Take your care. vacation. Thank you. Okay, so um, next on the agenda, we had 604 Rock Street, which was um, a roof. And nobody's here because, um, so they were doing work without a permit again. Um, and I saw them there again today. They didn't go up on the roof, but they were there. They were told by the building department that they cannot be doing any work. The building, um, the, uh, Frank went by there and they were told in no uncertain terms they couldn't be doing any work. Mm -hmm. So, um, Kerry, do you want to weigh in here? Yeah, they didn't have a licensed contractor. And I went over there kind of, exp I, I went online and pulled all the paperwork out for them because I knew that was kind of be a challenge as well because it was a language barrier. And um, Frank explained to them that nothing can go any further. They can cover up the hole in the roof, but nothing can go any further till they get a proper contract to pull a permit. And then they've got to still do nothing until they go in front of this board. So they, they know what they have to do. I believe there was a bit of a language barrier. Um, that doesn't mean people are going to do the right thing, you know, regardless if you tell them. But so since Connie said she saw them yesterday, I, I'm going to try to remember to tell Frank tomorrow that he did, hey, see, he did see them there. So who owns the property? I don't know. Because like, we never even got that information. Okay, because it, it was Adam, right? Did Adam sold it? Connie? I don't know. He sold it. I really it. don't. Yeah, okay. I thought it. I saw it on the properties of LLC. I forget the name of it. But I don't think it's a local person that owns it. Um, you can look up the LLCs through the um, the uh, Secretary of State's uh, database through the um, state of Massachusetts. Usually there it should list who the members are, but um, this is the yellow, I think it's yellow on the corner. Um, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so, and forgive me for, I mean, this is a silly question, but um, so I looked up the, um, the historic district's uh, paperwork that was listed as non-contributing to the, to the district. To no. The, uh, no, I mean, we, uh, it may have been in the National Register District. No, it's in the 40C District. It is in the 40C. Okay, but I think in the, in the, the National Register, which is different, um, I believe it was listed as non-contributing. Non because it had been altered a lot. Right, it had, it had no altered, but it um, no longer applies. Okay, once it's in the, okay, once it's in the local, okay. Yes. Yeah, okay. when it's in a 40C district, they're sort of, whatever was done previously is grandfathered in at mm. to that point. But mm. anything that they do further beyond that, any kind of renovation that they're gonna do has to then conform. Right. So if they want to put a porch on to a, a house that's already been sided, mm -hmm. they can't put on a porch that's going to be sided because mm -hmm. you're going to have to conform to whatever. So either they're going to take all the siding off the house or they're not going to put the porch on. Um, it's, you know, mm -hmm. it, it's at that point. So. And so I, oh, Mary, the contractors were not licensed, right? Is that Yes, they didn't. They they only have like a, a construction supervisor's license, which isn't a, which isn't the proper one or something. I do remember they thought they had something. I don't know how forthright they were being, to be honest with you. It, okay. So it it was so difficult. The city doesn't because, the city doesn't give permits to somebody that's not credentialed. No, really. absolutely not. So there was just like problem after problem. I see. Okay. All right, well, um, I mean, it's halted at this point until everything is done appropriately. So I I'm going to tell Frank tomorrow to please go by there again. Okay. I think what we need to do at this point, um, again, which we did in uh, 2019, is we sent out letters to all the homeowners 
in the district to remind them you are in a historic district. Any work that you are going to do needs to come before us. But I think we need probably at this point to get an updated list of um, addresses uh, as for uh, homeowners in the property because some of them were <coughs> sold since, so we probably have old information. So okay. um, I know that Adam, who the previous owner, he came before us. Right. Um, so he was very much aware of the home that he was selling was in a 40C district. Right. But it doesn't mean that the new owner is either he he may or may not have told them, which I we have no way of knowing. Yeah. Um, but either way, the new owner could also play ignorant of the fact and there's no way we can he hired a company that clearly wasn't licensed to fix his roof. Well, that tells you to me that just like when you hire a contractor that doesn't pull a permit to me, that's a red flag. Yeah. Um, so, uh, you know, um, and you know, anyway, what? they, and if they had pulled a permit appropriately, like everybody else pulls a permit, if there was any, anything they needed to take care of, like the historic commission coming before us, they would have done that first and avoided the chaos of having right. the roof. Exactly. So, yes. So I think the letter needs to go out again. Um, and let me hang on. I'm going to write this as I'm doing it. And also, I think um, we should probably consider reaching out to the um, the local real estate agencies and just sending out a general letter explaining about the 40C district because I, I don't even know. I know real estate agents are supposed to do their due diligence and they are supposed to look something like this up on the deed and see, you know, is it in a, a district or whatever. But as you know, not everyone does that. There are a lot of lazy people and then it falls on, unfortunately, the homeowner isn't aware when they should be aware. Um, so I think in order to maybe avoid some of these situations in the future, it would be a good idea to reach out to the, to the local agents and just say, hey, these 47 properties are in a district. This is where the district is and you need to be aware when you are selling any properties in this area that they do come with preservation restrictions. I agree. So I don't, I mean, it's not, it There's won't so be. so many realtors though, that it's like, that's an undertaking to send it well, out. I, mean, I, know, I know that when we've seen signs go up, we have made the calls to them individually to yeah. make them aware. No, but I think as long as we hit the um, the major agencies, I mean, I know there's there's a lot of little agencies that, you know, you're probably not going to get all of them, but the general, I think, you know, you can easily get a, a good idea of the general agency, the one that you see selling a lot of the different properties in the city. Um, I think as long as you're reaching out to most of them, because I don't think if you're going to sell a house in the district, you're probably not going to go with some little itty bitty realtor that no one really is, is aware of. The only thing is, unfortunately, some of them may use a realtor that's not in this area. And at that point, if you see a sign up that isn't one of our local realtors, then um, you can always let me know and then we can just send that letter. But I mean, I think a generic letter just saying, mm -hmm. you know, dear, you know, realtors, whatever, and this is what you need to know about the properties in, the, in this area. Um, I think that would suffice. You know, okay. Jason? No, I think, I, no I, think that, I think that works, um, just a general, a general letter really, um, yeah. yeah. Um. Definitely can't hurt, Kristen, that's for sure, right? No, no, it can't. I mean, if we can avoid any future headaches, I'm, yep. I just say it's done its job. <clears throat> yeah, the, uh, like the, uh, the homeowners on High Street, I mean, the, they came in to see us blindfolded, really. They had no idea. 
Um, and thankfully they've, I mean, they've really turned that, pro I think it's 670 High Street. They've really just, that property looks so- It's gorgeous. It's they, they, yeah, they take such pride in that property. And I love, I love seeing that. Okay, so anything else? I'll draft up a letter anyway, just a generic letter. I'll you know, and Kristen, I'll send it out. Like I'll take care of that part. So the realtors, you mean? Yeah, I, I'll we'll gonna, I mean, I can look in the phone book, but do you want to put down like a handful that you think of the names, and I'll just find the addresses and whatnot? Yes, that would be great. Thank okay. you. Okay. Um, okay. So moving on, old business, two fifty eight, two sixty Prospect Street. Um, I so I did send you uh, both of the things, right? The receipt and the the original thing. Um, so they did receive the letter. We have not received a call from them. They have not contacted us. Obviously, nobody's here at the meeting. Um, so. What do, what do we do from here? Carrie, did I resend the letter to Glenn to? Yes, you did. Okay, I and I brought it over the, to him and yes. I like, you know, I'm like, Glenn, I know you got a lot to do. I'm going to try, why don't we try to do this together? I mean, I'll just give me the bullet point. He's like, I promise Carrie I'll get to it. And that uh, we haven't gotten the opportunity yet, but I did. I went right over there the next day. Like I said, I would. I thought I, I thought I did. I just wanted to make sure. Yeah. Okay. Well, so. you know, we do have the option of uh, enforcing a monetary fine. And if, if, they're, if they're choosing to ignore us, uh, we could just send another letter. Uh, you know, this gets 30 days, no response. Send them another letter and tell them on a, a pick a date and tell them effectively as of this date, there'll be a... a monetary fine applied that that should wake someone up i i hope so it did say it in the letter it did yes, yes it, it did. did it yeah. did yep but it yeah. didn't have a date it just said that there was a you know the ability to fine up to so much per day okay. uh, but we could give them a date telling them that if if we don't hear from them or you know some sort of remedial action is not taken uh, then we will s subject them to a fine. And that can just go against the home uh, as an attachment. Uh, and the, whenever it's sold, the attachment's going to have to be rectified. You mean a lien on the property? Yes. Yeah. Are you guys able to do that? Uh, according to our ordinance, we are. Okay. Because that's a really great way, if you ask me, not that my opinion yep. matters, but there's really no running from that. You know what I mean? It will catch up to you at some point. Mm -hmm. According to according to the ordinance, we okay, do. Good. Considering that there's been, I don't know if it's sold, but there has been repeated attempts to sell the property. Um, a lien would squash that, or at least halt it. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Okay. And this is the second letter that you've sent out, Carrie. We sent that letter about a year ago, and that was ignored. Yeah. yeah. So. But the receipt was never found on that. Well, no. true okay. too. But if uh, if this one has not been acknowledged within thirty days, then let's send. I will make a motion that we send out another letter, and uh, tell them that. That, that, that you know we're going to start imposing a fine or imposing the imposing this penalty upon them uh, and we'll wait and see what happens okay so if there's no response by what date mm -hmm. you want it 30 days from the day we how about the 30 days from the date that it was signed for the certified mail yes that's good okay uh, yeah but that that's already now so we can't really I mean, we should give them a from the next letter saying if we don't hear from you okay. in the next that's true. whatever. Then right. give, I give think them another thirty uh, through the from chair. today. 
Yeah, th through the chair. The meeting was held and it was voted to send uh, another letter with, with, with these particular parameters, blah, blah, blah. Okay. You can say we just the meeting. Then and then pick a date, pick a date 30 days after this letter, there will be a fine it. imposed. Mm -hmm. We also have to select the fine. Yes. We do. So, okay. How about we select a fine and then make a motion that this is the letter that we send? So, I mean. I just want you, I, this is just my, my take on it. I just want the fine to be realistic, mm -hmm. not some number that is going to like make his head spin mm -hmm. and that nobody will ever pay. You know, maybe you could go up in increments or something. I don't know, but like three hundred dollars a day wasn't that the initial number? No, no, we chose a hundred. Be up. It could be up to three hundred dollars a yeah. day. Okay, that's where we I have the it. ability to find up to. We chose hundred. When we spoke a while, a few months back, it was uh, I, I believe we used a hundred as our uh, daily fine. Now we could make that any other number. If the letter could say that the fine will start if they don't contact us, mm -hmm. they just don't even communicate with us. So at least right. if they communicate, it would avoid starting any fine. Exactly. That stigma. Yeah. Well, if, 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 through the chair, if, if we if we uh, sent the second letter and give them thirty days. To contact us, right, and and then you know then then we would start to take some monetary uh, action, and we don't even have to stipulate a number if we don't want to. They do know from the we, first letter. We can say right; it, it can be up to three hundred dollars a day. What the board votes on, right. or something along that line, so that they know it could actually be three hundred dollars a day. Right. Not that we'd ever want to cause anyone that kind of distress right. but at the same we time don't... we want a response like right. come talk to us for us to resolve this we don't uh, want to find anybody that's not that's right. not our goal here our goal here is just to keep things within the district the way that they're supposed to be and it's not we're not here to punish people right. we're here to work right. with people we're here to make sure that and everyone has the same uh, the same responsibility toward other houses in the district. And mm -hmm. just like we just finished telling that other homeowner, she has to meet the uh, Secretary of Interior Standards. It's the same thing here. Right. We're not enforcing anything with one that we wouldn't do with another, that right. it's right. the standard. It's, it's just that others contact us and discuss the issue. Yeah. This individual has refused just seems to be ignoring us. That's that's the feeling I'm getting when we're getting no response. I would hate to see if there is going to be a new buyer that they get, then that, that somehow they inherit this issue because that's just not a nice way to walk, welcome somebody to the neighborhood. Right, but you know what? Um, they would have to resolve it before selling it. They'd have All to create right. the title. Okay. So it wouldn't it wouldn't be imposed on the new um, you know, I'm a new owner. Yeah. They just couldn't sell until they resolve it. Just it's like such a beautiful house that, too. It is beautiful and it's, yeah. and they've maintained it, uh, really nicely. And then, yeah. so I don't really know what possessed them to do. So. Me neither. Don't either. And it's a beautiful property. They've done so much. It could, you know, the garage is beautiful. worth more than some people's house. Yes. The garage is enormous. Yes. It's and it's not even it's not even that what they did on the porch is a horrible looking porch. It just is not a historic porch. It does not conform to the standards of the district. In in any other neighborhood, the porch would be fine. It is not fine in an historic neighborhood. Correct. And if everyone else is held to those standards they need to be held to those standards as well. Yeah. Correct. I mean, that is really just the bottom line. It's what you guys stand for. Mm -hmm. You can't 
pick and choose who's going to do the right thing. And it's not that you want to, you know, you don't want to aggravate anybody, but it's not fair to the others. It's not. Rick, who you have to, you know, to take the, them, the right? extra steps. Rick, haven't you tried to reach out to him, like personally? Uh, I did, but um, <laughs> he was working one day with a number of individuals and I didn't want to go walking on the property. And when I tried to catch him alone, it was, I just never, never saw him there. Oh, okay. But, but you're right. I, I did. Uh, I just didn't want to get battered. Yeah, it's not worth it. Okay. Okay. So then I will um, draft up a letter. Sounds for that. Okay, so moving on, merger of the Historic Commission, Historic District Commission. So we did, we talked about that at the last meeting actually, but Jason, um, did you want to weigh in anything on this? Did you, I, I did send it to you as well, didn't I? Yes, yes. Okay, I thought so. No, I think it was, um, uh, and I was listening along uh, with, um, at the last meeting and uh, it, I, I think it's, it's done very, very well um, that, um, I don't really have any questions. I, I do want to kind of come through it one more time, but I don't have any anything that's sticking out right now. Okay. Yeah. And I you think just want it to come cool. to fruition, I think. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that is hello. <laughs> yeah. So I think we're going to discuss um, it at the next our next meeting, correct? We're gonna send yeah. you some changes and then we're gonna fully discuss it mm -hmm. at our next meeting. Okay. See the thing that, that really stinks here is because Jason's on this commission, but he's not on the other one. When we have the big discussion, he he's not he's not there for that. That's so unfair. I want, but right? are we allowed? <laughs> are we allowed to invite him as a? No, I, I guess we really can't. I, mean, he wouldn't be I think he could get convoluted at that point. Yeah. He wouldn't be a. I mean, he can. He can attend and watch it like a, a guest like else. yeah like but he can't time. comment until the next meeting so right. yeah okay and just on um I mean, as a just in case um i did send in i, I never re received a uh, reply i did send in my uh letter of interest and resume that sort of thing to the mayor's office um a while ago um so just because there is technically an open seat well, I already uh, talked with her too, um, with Ann O'Neill mm -hmm. at one point because she had talked about filling the seat and I told her about the two commissions combining mm -hmm. and how you were on the other one and we wanted you to be a part of this one. So that's what we were mm -hmm. attempting to do with combining the two. So she is aware. So I, you know, either she's just not going to fill the seat or they would put you on it anyway and then the two would just combine. Okay. But she knows not to fill it with somebody else. <laughs> I think the goal is to merge everyone that's currently seated. Yes, yes, that is the plan. So, um, okay. So, um, moving on. So, open discussion. Is there anything, um, anything not on here that just came up that we need to talk about? No, nothing on my my end. Okay, mine either. I neither. Okay, um, so then our next meeting is scheduled for Tuesday, May 18th, 2021 at 6.30 p.m. And we will uh, determine whether or not it's going to be a Zoom meeting again or if we will have it um, at City Hall. Because I know now City Hall is opening up for some of the meetings. So then it is a possibility to have it there. And sometimes I think it works out better. Um, so then we can have all of our papers in front of us. We can do, you know, things that, that we need to do. There isn't that lovely delay when someone's talking and someone else wants to talk. It is. It's, it's, <laughs> no technical issues or anything yeah. like that. Log on. Right. Yeah. So, okay. So then if that's everything, then can I get a motion to adjourn? I'll make a motion. I'll second. I have a motion and a second. So we'll do a roll call. And Connie Soul. Yes. Richard Mancini. Yes. Jason Bouchard Naraki. Yes. 
Kristen Cantara Oliveira, I vote yes as well. So we will adjourn 8.07 p.m. Thank you, everyone, and have a very good night. Good night. Thank you. Good night. Have yourself a good week. You as well.